Good morning, folks. Four days ago, the central sunspot began flashing low-level sea flares and popping minor ejecta. We expected a weak interplanetary shockwave impact today, and there it is in the solar wind. Density, speed, and plasma temperature in orange, yellow, and green. It was a very weak impact. However, that sunspot came alive as it turned away from our planet, picking up the M flares where the incoming spots left off. Now, it didn't match the M5.9 we saw yesterday, but it certainly gets one's attention. Using different wavelengths at the Solar Dynamics Observatory allows us to see just how violent these eruptions can be and the breadth of the different types of ejecta. As we often see with eruptions on the departing limb, protons were surged along the interplanetary magnetic fields and arrived at Earth's polar regions within minutes. Nowhere near radiation storm levels, though. Shocker, I'm going to disagree with NASA and NOAA, as both their endless spirals show the primary eruption from those flares to be missing Earth. It's like they hate their own satellites. Look at this a couple times. Forget the second eruption, which will indeed miss Earth. But look north and south of center. The plasma surged at those angles means it is also surged behind the central blocking disk that cuts the sun's glare and lets us see the plasma. If it's expanding out, cutting right through that central disk, we're likely to get at least a glancing blow, even without factoring in the Earth's rotation is sending us to the right from this vantage point. I expect some form of minor to moderate impact. More flaring is not out of the question as the departing spot has a delta class with positive and negative mixing well down there at the bottom of the grouping. The trailing northern sunspots want to mix magnetically but they're just too spread and small. It does retain its gamma class though. Big dogs down south are content to sit quietly, beta or even alpha class depending on how you judge the trailing negative dots. The dark patch coming in will be just as serious a concern for space weather. That coronal hole is about to be geo-effective and the force on Iswa shows a tremendous push to that opening. Neither of those dudes is me, but that thing behind him is mine. We arrived in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada yesterday to a very happy welcome. Summarize the sciences of the sun, space weather, and its electromagnetic effects on our planet. This mobile observatory is just another way for him to share the sciences. Uh, well, we've had people that have been supporting us for a little more than three years. I work with scientists all across the country. There's a lot of on-site uh, reporting and studies that can be done, and the only real way to do that, uh, meet the people, is to get out on the road and uh, get my hands in the dirt, so to speak. Really enjoyed our talks at the meet and greet there. We're heading to Edmonton today. The rest of the Canadian tour is posted on observatoryproject.com and on the Facebook page. It includes Alliance, Calgary, Kamloops, and hopefully Vancouver. One place I will not be going is 67P. That's Rosetta's business and the potential landing sites have been chosen. More in the link below. Also linked is a story about the coldest August in 100 years for parts of the UK, just as they broke record highs 500 miles to the east. Right now the storm zones are in a bit of disarray with a couple macro and micro flows at play. You gotta check your local forecasts. Cristobal, churning in the Atlantic, luckily slated to miss everything except probably Europe next week. A more interesting story is off the Mexican coastline where Marie is a powerful hurricane that won't make landfall, but she doesn't have to. Look at the moisture sent aloft even up across the mountains and into the U.S. southwest. The flow is actually connected 2,000 miles away to the main Canadian low. We do have a convergence in the central states as well. Combined with the shear, it makes for the flash flood warnings tonight. You can see the areas of convergence pretty easily here. They will direct tonight's storm warnings down under. We've got the world storm alerts, some global conditions, and shots of our star to close. It's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.40 a.m. Mountain Time. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.